Hey guys, Wix100 here, and today I'm going to show you how to use min-max controls. Now, before we begin, I would like to uh, say to make sure that you're watching my previous tutorials as well as these, uh, because with each tutorial, I'm going to be adding more and more and might be referencing the previous tutorials. So if you don't watch the previous tutorials and I use something that we learned in the previous tutorials, then you might get lost. So, first we're going to start off at like normal with create a new project and then create a Windows Forms app.net framework and call it min max control. For some reason, whenever I type controls, I usually um, capitalize the O. And then again, I'm putting mine in C Sharp tutorials so I can put it in the repository after the video. Create. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to explain what a min max control is. Min max controls are my term for the for a group of controls that have minimums and maximums. For example, a progress bar. And that's there we go. That's a better pro actually. I'm going to re put in the progress bar so it's at its default height. So a progress bar. A numeric up down. Let me size that up. A track bar. And a scroll bar. Uh, we're going to be specifically using the horizontal scroll bar, or actually it's just called an H scroll bar. Um, there's also a vertical one. It works the exact same way, except it goes up and down instead of side to side. Okay, so let's resize that to be about there. And then go into our properties window. For the form, we're going to put in the text field min max, not min min, min max controls. And then where it says maximize box, we want that to be false. Um, and then we're actually going to, since this is the min max controls episode, I figured I would teach you about minimum size and maximum size of controls. So we're going to make this so that you can stretch this left and right, but not up and down. And I will explain why not up and down in a moment. So as you can see, its size is 818 by 194. So its height is 194. So we're going to set its maximum height to 10,000 by 194. And the reason why we're setting it to 10,000 is because you're not likely going to need to go anywhere near 10,000. But if we only set the maximum height, then the maximum width would be zero, which would make the box, which would make the window not seeable or usable. So we're going to set the minimum size to zero by 194. So since the min and the max are both the same number, that means you cannot go past those two bounds, so it has to stay 194. And so now we're at the progress bar, and again, we should name Our controls. I'm just gonna say ex progress bar instead of example progress bar because ex is shorter. Um, and then set its anchor to be left and right. For the numeric up down, I'm gonna call ex num 
up, down, and set its anchor to left and right as well. Same thing for track bar, DX track bar, and left and right, and then EX scroll bar. And I'm not going to say H scroll bar because it's the only scroll bar we have, so I don't really need to specify that it's the horizontal one and left and right. And so then we're going to make sure that all of their minimums and maximums are set properly. So for the progress bar, maximum is 100, minimum is 0, step is 1. The step is um, how many clicks it goes at a time. So if you want it to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then you set it to 1. If you want it to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you set it to 10, and so on and so forth. Um, numeric up down. Um, minimum is 0, maximum is 100. Uh, for numeric up down, it's called increment instead of step, it's at 1. Um, for this, we also want to go to decimal places at zero. That's correct. Because the numeric up down can also support decimals. For the track bar, we want maximum 100, minimum zero. Um, where is it? Step? Or is it increment? Or maybe there is none for track bar but I want tick style to be none uh, tick style showed those little lines but because we have the progress bar actually over top of the track bar because it has a big space below it it would be pointless to have the lines because they would be partially covered by the scroll bar so scroll bar value 0 Minimum 0, maximum 100, and does it have a step or increment? Oh, it has large change and small change. One and one. Let's do that. Okay, so save periodically. And so if we start this, remember there's no code, so Changing these values won't do anything, but let's start it to test the size parameters. So there's no maximum button, but you can minimize, and you cannot resize it up and down, but you can left and right. Okay, so let's go with the progress bar first. Actually, now that I think about it, we won't be doing changing the code for the progress bar because you don't change the progress bar's value it with the progress bar, you change it with other things. So for the numeric up down value changed, remember double click on the control to get its standard function, which for numeric up down its value changed, and you want to say ex progress bar dot value equals ex num up down oh wait let me I accidentally put a capital U there we go num up down dot value now if you notice there's an error because num up down dot value is a decimal and um, progress bar value is an int so what we want to do is what's called casting so if you do parenthesis int parenthesis it's now taking this variable x num, x num up down dot value which is a decimal and turning it into an int which is an integer which means no decimal places so, if we copy this part, 
and do ex trackbar and then paste it in and ex scroll bar and then paste it in. So now what this means is whenever we change the value of the numeric up down, then it will make the progress bar's value equal the num up down, the track bar's value equal the num up down, and the scroll bar's value equal the num the num up down. And so let's double click on the track bar and do the same thing, except dot value equals track bar dot value. And there's no error this time because they're both integers. So let's copy that and do ex num up down and ex scroll bar. And so finally, the scroll bar's turn. Ex progress. Uh, actually, before we get to the scroll bar, I would like to point out that um, the reason why there's no error here with saying that the decimal equals an integer is because a decimal can e equal an integer because an integer is just a number without a decimal place. So the decimal equivalent of it would be that number point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. So you can say that a decimal equals an integer. You cannot say an integer equals a decimal unless you convert that decimal into an integer, which conversion of a decimal to an integer just truncates it, which means anything past that decimal place gets erased. Okay, so progress bar dot value equals ex scroll bar dot value and so copy this again and do ex num up down dot value and ex track bar dot value uh, uh, value. And so both of these are the same as above. The progress bar equals the track bar. The thumb up down equals the track bar. The scroll bar equals the track bar whenever the track bar is changed. And the progress bar equals the scroll bar. The thumb up down equals the scroll bar. And the track bar equals the scroll bar when the scroll bar is changed. So save that and start. And so now, as before, you can change the width, you cannot change the height, and now as we drag this across, the scroll bar drags with it, the progress bar drags with it, somewhat, and the um, numeric up-down changes with it too. The reason why the um, progress bar lags behind is because it's actually setting it to that value in real time but because of the way the progress bar works um, internally it's running that uh, animation so if we type in 100 and then hit enter you can see it moving up on its own all well, the other stuff and we can do this uh, with the progress bar or not with the progress bar with the scroll bar it maxes out at 1 and 99 until you release. So you can see that. So there we go. We learned how to use a progress bar, a numeric up down, a track bar, and a horizontal scroll bar, which then you can also use a vertical scroll bar now too. So those have been the min max controls. Hope you liked this hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe as well, hit the, notif hit the bell to be notified, check out my other channels, my Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, and make sure you watch my other C-sharp videos 
if you haven't already so that you aren't lost in future videos because programming is stack based learning you learn um, based on what you already know so if you don't watch those previous videos then you will be lost eventually and I know we're going over beginner stuff right now so if you already know this hang in there because I will be teaching more advanced stuff as we go along so till next time bye